YouTube. Y'all already know what it is, man. It's your favorite damn DJ in the land, DJ Lixer. And I am here doing this video basically for you guys. This will be my second Q&A, basically saying thank you so much for making me hit 200 subscribers. I was supposed to do this video when I hit 100 subscribers, but then I forgot. And then I was like, oh, well, let me go ahead and do it. And then I ended up having like 170 subscribers by the time I was going to do it. And then I was like, well, let me wait till I get 200. And now I'm at like 230. So I was like, let me hurry up and do this before I forget Bruh. again. Went on Snapchat, what was this, a couple weeks ago, and asked um, my loyal Snapchat followers. Link will be down here, you know, in the description. Also, you know, I'll have it right here somewhere for you in this area. I went on Snapchat. And I um, asked my Snapchat followers, basically, you know, were there any questions that you had for a DJ or for me personally? And I took 20 of the best questions and I'm just here to answer those for you. So I'm not gonna waste any more time. Let's get straight into it. Question number one, how long have you been a DJ? I have been a DJ for five years coming this November, you guys. So it's gonna be DJ Lixer's fifth annual birthday party. Come turn up with me. Get it, get it, get it. Just kidding, I'm not having a fifth birthday party for DJ Lixer. But come in November, I will have been doing this for five years, you guys, and I'm still a baby in the game, you know what I'm saying? So there's that. Question number two, where did your DJ name come from? Funny story about this, you guys. My original DJ name was not DJ Lixer. My original DJ name was DJ Lady Tay, because it matched my government name or whatever. Long story short, I was a part of a DJ crew, but everybody in that crew's name had the name Tay in it. So every time I did an event with that group, they'd always assume I was a guy, or they always assumed I was one of the other DJ members in our crew, which I wasn't. So I'm on the phone with my brother, Mark Cooper. Shout out to one of the coldest producers in Detroit, Mark Cooper, you know what I'm saying? We're on the phone and I'm telling him like, bro, I need a new DJ name, blah, 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 blah. And he was like, oh, well, why don't you use DJ Lixer? I thought he said DJ Lixer. So I assumed he was saying that because I was gay and I was like really offended. And I was like, bro, we're better than that, blah, blah, blah. Like, why would you think that would be okay for a DJ name? And he was like, no, he said Elixir. I was like, oh. Basically we took the E off and we had Elixir because you know, it's a little pun in there too because I'm gay and I do licks her. Elixir, if you didn't know, is a scientific term for mixing. So that's where my original name came from. It wasn't because, you know, I was out here licking the cat or whatever. Question number three, where are you from? I am hailing from Ann Arbor, Michigan, you guys. Born and raised, go Wolverines, even though we kind of suck this year. I mean, we need a quarterback. Number four, what got you into DJing? DJing literally fell in my lap, you guys. I was, if you've known me for a while, you know that I used to produce heavy a good friend of mine at the time gave me virtual dj and i wasn't even using it to be a dj clearly i was using it to chop up samples because it was easier to chop up sam samples in virtual dj than it was to do it in fl at the time because i was using fruity loops on my laptop one day i literally started playing with it i blended two tracks together and i was like oh wait that sounds a little funky i just i kept playing with it you guys and that's when i told him and the guy who i was really cool with shout out to cap he was, um, he used to be a DJ back in the day. So he was like, I think you should try being a DJ. And I was like, huh, how hard it could it be? Bruh. So yeah, that's really how I got into DJing. Do you prefer turntables or CDJs? Turntables. If you wanna watch my video that showed when I, my CDJ went out in the middle of my set, you could tell why I love turntables. No offense to those using CDJs. I prefer vinyl, less issues, for me at least, all right? Question number six, how do you feel about laptop DJs? I have a love-hate relationship with laptop DJs, guys, simply because I don't feel you can call yourself a DJ if you're using a laptop. No shade to anyone using a laptop. When I first started my career, I was using a laptop, but I wanted to learn more. I wanted to be a better performer, so I stepped my game up. I went from laptop to a controller to vinyl. I feel like if you're a laptop DJ, you're cheating the game, man. You're not a disc jockey. So call yourself what you really are, which is an MP3 player. Question number seven, what's the biggest venue you've done? All right, you guys, so I've done um, a couple of large venues. I wanna say the largest venue I've ever done 
would probably be the Masonic Temple in Detroit. Polo Frost and I opened up for Snoop Dogg when he was at the Masonic Temple and it was really lit. I want to say you guys it was over 10,000 people there. It might have been more. I don't know how to count for real. It was it was really lit and it was live you guys. Folks, mother fucking move. when me and Polo Frost opened up for Snoop Dogg, that was probably the biggest venue I've done. Question number eight, how much did you charge for your first DJing gig? First off, y'all nosy. My very first DJing gig, professionally or even, you know, just for practice, I didn't charge anything. I really was doing it for the love of DJing. I, I was doing it to make people have fun, to make people happy. I never thought to start charging as a DJ until I started spending money on equipment. My first gig, which I'll have a story time on that, I did get paid $25 and a plate of fried chicken. So that's how I got paid for my first DJ and gig. Question number nine, how much do you make now? Once again, y'all are real nosy. I'm not gonna tell you guys how much I make because I don't want people thinking I'm out here rich. I could be, I could not be, I could be broke. Y'all never know. I definitely make enough to you know support myself as a full-time DJ. This is my only job. This is literally my, this is my everything. So I make enough money to you know take care of myself and my bills so i think i'm doing pretty good you know what i'm saying question number 10 what's your favorite genre of music to listen to when i'm at the crib i like listening to old school like i like hip-hop and, and rap but because i spin it so much i never really get a chance to listen to old school music and since my parents are older you guys i grew up on the likes of you know shaka khan tina marie rick james luther vandross Gladys Knight, the OJs, Frankie Beverly and Mays, Prince, old school Michael Jackson. You know, my dad even had me listening to Bach and Frank Sinatra when I was in the womb, you know, with the headphones on. So I'm very, very cultured when it comes to music, but I like listening to probably anything that came out before 89. Question number 11, do you prefer club or mobile gigs? I can answer this two ways. I prefer the club. The reason why I prefer the club is because as a practicing turntablist, in the club, you get to have fun. In the club, you get to cut up. In the club, you get to bring things back. You drop, you know, your, your coolest tags. You know, you get people involved, etc., etc. With mobile gigs, even though mobile gigs do pay me more, so that'll be the one reason why I do like mobile gigs more. When you're doing like a Sweet 16 or someone's wedding, they don't want to hear all that. Let's just face the facts. They don't want to hear, you know, somebody cutting up on the turntables unless they, you know, got book Jazzy Jeff because they know he's going to do that. I'm definitely trying to get to that level, but as of right now, I definitely prefer the club over any mobile gig right now. Question number 12, where can I get Elixir tea? Well, ironically, I'm not <laughs> wearing a DJ Elixir t-shirt right now, but um, I will have my website up mid-November at the absolute latest. It will be up by December 1st, and I'll have a store where you can buy all the merchandise, you guys. I'm working on it. Question number 13. As a female DJ, are you treated differently than the guys? I feel like when people see me, they don't expect as much out of me as they would a male counterpart because the most famous women DJs that you see are the ones with the nice bodies, but they can't even blend two records together. You got like your Paris Hilton's. DJ Duffy's of the world who they look great but they don't even know how to blend tracks they don't know how to you know even do a a, a, a chirp scratch or nothing like that so I would definitely say the way I'm treated differently is when I come to venues like clubs and stuff like that, they don't expect much. And when I blow them out of the water and they get this Lixer experience, they're like, damn. Like I literally had people come up to me and say, damn, you're a lot better than I thought you would be. So 
I guess that's one way I'm treated differently than the guy. Question number 14. How long have you been a full-time DJ? Actually, I've been a full-time DJ for about 14, maybe 15 months. Long story short, I got fired from my job, you guys, a year ago. Probably one of the best jobs I've ever had before in my life. And I said, well, you know what? I like being a DJ more. Let's try this out for a year, see what happens. I said I'd give myself a, a year to do it, and if it doesn't work out, you know, I'll go back to school, give me a regular job, et cetera, et cetera. But guess what? It's definitely worked out. So that shows you that if you grind, you work hard, man, you can do whatever you want in this life. You know what I'm saying? Question number 15. Has being a gay DJ helped your career more or hurt your career more? Being an out female, a lesbian woman, has not helped nor really hurt my career as far as being a DJ. I can honestly say I feel like um, being a woman has had more of an impact on me getting booked rather than me being gay. Most people who book me don't even know I'm really gay. Like, it's not like I'm walking around here with, you know, a rainbow flag hanging out of my behind, man. I don't, <laughs> I don't really showcase it like that. It's not like I'm like, hey, I'm the gay DJ. What do you want to do? I can honestly say though, for the few lesbian weddings I've done this year, they didn't book me because I was gay, but when they found out that I was a lesbian, there it was kind of like a plus. Like, oh, you get it. Like talking to them, we can relate more, you know, when we have our meetings, you know, what type of songs to play, di different things like that, because it's just some things you won't know about unless you're in the LGBTQ community or unless you're a gay woman. To answer the question, no, being a gay DJ has not helped my career, nor has it hurt my career. So it's really in the middle. Question number 16, what's your favorite kind of music to spin? My favorite kind of music to spin is definitely hip hop, house music. You know, I like to listen to old school, but I can't cut up on old school the way I can some of these new hit, newer hip hop tracks. And you know, getting in with some of these, you know, these dubstep tracks as well as some of these, these house tracks. So definitely hip hop house are some of my favorite tracks to spin while I'm DJing for sure. Question number 17, deep house or techno? Deep house, baby. I can spend Deep House all day. That's what I grew up listening to. And if you're from the Detroit area, Deep House, y'all already know what it is, man. We always have a good time with that. You know, we that's when you get those hips moving. <laughs> Question number 18. What are some of your DJ influences? The most influential DJs in my life, obviously, DJ Spinderella, you guys. Um, if you guys don't know, that's Salt and Peppers DJ. She's produced all of Salt and Peppers hits. Honestly, push it. You can thank Spinderella for Push It. And because she's a DJ producer, obviously we go hand in hand, we're both women. I just, she's the goal, honestly. Um, the Magnificent, DJ Jazzy Jeff, actually got his um control vinyl here on my wall. The sign, he signed it, the signed control vinyl by the Magnificent DJ Jazzy Jeff right here. Very inspiring man and he's like, he's the GOAT man. Every, every turntablist I know looks up to DJ Jazzy Jeff. I would definitely have to say Jam Master J, rest in peace JMJ, icon, like icon you guys, iconic, he's the best, like iconic, and then you guys probably don't know him, you might know him, if you're from my area then you probably do know, do know him, uh, DJ G Nice, that is the man who taught me <laughs> a lot of the things that I know, he helped me in becoming a turntablist. And people sleep on G Nice a lot, man. Like he's one of the coldest and he doesn't even really show it. He's a DJ for more than like 20 years. So definitely Spinderella, DJ Jazzy Jeff, DJ Jam Master J, DJ G Nice. Those are my influences. Question number 19, how long did it take for you to learn vinyl? I'm still learning vinyl. If we're being honest, it's a lot of things that I do know about vinyl, but it's a lot of things that I don't know, you guys. like. I'm a practicing turntablist, as you guys know. If you haven't seen the video, check the videos out. It's so much that goes into it. I know people who've been doing this for 25 years, you guys, and are still learning tricks and learning how to, you know, the, the incorporation of certain mixers have just introduced a whole new era of things that you can do with two turntables. Answer the question generally for me to learn basically, you know, how to put a turntable together, the difference between, you know, control vinyl and the different type of needles that you need. Juggling and, and, and scratching. I'd say it, it took me about a year to master. Once you get it down, man, you can't, you can't lose once you get it down. So i say about a year. Question number 20, will we get more Q&As from you? Absolutely, you guys will be getting more Q&As from me, man. I had a lot of fun 
reading all of these from you guys on Snapchat. I really, really appreciate you guys. You guys look and you guys listen. And now you've learned a little bit more about, you know, your girl, DJ Lixer. Here's to another 200,000. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you haven't liked this video yet, get out the comments, scroll up, hit that thumbs up button for your girl. Hit the thumbs up button, man. If you haven't subscribed, I don't know why you haven't. I don't know what you're waiting for, what you're missing out on. But anyway, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that b -b 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 bell for those notifications, man. So every time I upload, you get to see this lovely, beautiful face pop up on your YouTube feed and you're like, and your notifications and you're like, damn, who was that? That's DJ Lixer. I gotta go watch it right now. <laughs> Thanks you guys so much for 200 plus subscribers. Here's for another 200, 200,000, 200 million. Maybe one day. You never know. So like, subscribe, hit the bell, man. And um, I'll see y'all on the next one, all right? Peace. Damn.